Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is The Witcher Season 2. We start off in the aftermath of the huge battle where the wizards fought off the Nilfgaard invasion. In the end, Yennefer saved the day by unleashing a huge blast of fire magic, but now Yennefer is missing presumed dead. Then our witcher shows up, it's Geralt of Rivia, who's hanging out with Ciri, Princess Cirilla, his newfound adopted daughter, child of destiny. He and Yennefer have been in a hundred year on again off again relationship and he's pretty sad to hear she's dead. But Yennefer's alive, she was taken captive by the retreating Nilfgaard forces, more on her later. So Geralt's new main goal in life is to protect Ciri, his child of destiny. He's got kind of a grumpy dad thing going while she's a rambunctious teenager, so very quickly these two are bonded. For their first stop, they visit Geralt's old friend, Pumbaa from The Lion King, but he's hiding his new girlfriend from Geralt because she is, oh, nope, nope, nope. Actually though, she's kind of a friendly monster. These two have a good thing going on where she needs to drink blood and he's immortal, so it's consensual. Who am I to judge? But she also did eat the entire nearby village, so Geralt judges. He busts in there, does what he does best, and monster slays. So their next stop, hidden high up in the mountains, the Witcher home base, Kaer Morin. The few witchers that are left all hang out here for winter break and it's got kind of a fun frat house vibe. Their house daddy is the one old witcher, Vesemir. One of the witchers just killed a tree monster and wouldn't you know it, he got infected, turned into a tree monster himself, now Geralt's gotta kill him. And Geralt realizes he might not always be there to protect her, the best way to keep Ciri safe is to teach her how to fight. Now over to Yennefer, who's being held captive by Fringilla, who remembers the sorceress working for Nilfgaard, but pretty soon they're ambushed and captured by the elves. Remember elves in this world are horribly discriminated against and being genocided by humans. Their leader right now now is this elf sorceress, Francesca. Yennefer tries to play the, hey, I'm a quarter elf on my grandmother's side card, but they're like, yo, you ain't got pointy ears, you don't know our struggle. But right now she needs their help to find the secret hidden forest with a mysterious hut in it. And if you say the magic words, turn your front to me, hut, hut, oh, the hut turns around. Inside they all see who they want to see. The elf sees the elf goddess, Frangilla sees the god emperor of Nilfgaard, the white flame. But Yennefer realizes it's definitely some super sketchy ancient witch demon. She offers them each what they most desire, which for Yennefer is to get her magic back. Yes, after the big fireball, she She's lost her connection. But Yennefer turns her down for now, like, yo, this is clearly a trap. The other two, though, they accept. So they travel to Sintra, yes, Ciri's old kingdom that Nilfgaard captured at the beginning of season one. Nilfgaard takes in the elven refugees in exchange for joining their army to fight against their common enemy, the northern kingdoms. The elf queen gets what she wants, the first elven baby in like a thousand years, and Fragilla gets what she wants, rising higher in the Nilfgaard hierarchy. Yennefer goes back to the mage castle Eratuza, like, sup all, I'm alive. She's got good friends here, like her fellow sorceresses and her mama bear, Tissaia. But she's kind of in trouble because fire magic is very much against the rules. And and this old douchebag Stragabor thinks she's a Nilfgaard spy. Now the mages did capture Kahir, the Black Knight of Nilfgaard, and to prove she's not a spy, they're gonna make Yennefer execute him. But Yennefer is like, hey, I saved all your butts. If you don't trust me, screw you, I'm out of here. Meanwhile, Ciri's doing great in her training. She does the Witcher obstacle course and oh, wipe out. But now it's time to deal with Ciri's unexplained magical powers where she has like visions of the future. They follow the vision to find the tree monster, but oh, it's instantly killed by this other gross monster. Geralt, the monster expert, has never seen anything like this, but that doesn't stop him from slaying it. Now remember, at the very beginning of season one, when Ciri screamed and toppled over that ancient monolith, Geralt has a theory that these new types of monsters are somehow coming from it, so he goes to the resident monolith expert, Istrid, who was Yennefer's college boyfriend. So it's time we learn about the history of this world, specifically the conjunction of the spheres. A long, long time ago, a bunch of worlds all crashed together and merged into this one. Elves and humans were from different worlds, but now on the same one, along with, unfortunately, monsters. But the new theory is maybe the worlds didn't stay merged, the other worlds are still out there, and the monoliths connect them. That's that's where the new monsters are coming from, and somehow Ciri is the key. So Geralt brings in his old sorceress friend, Triss Marigold, to check out Ciri's visions. First, they discover that Ciri has elder blood, which could be used to make a new witcher formula, and Ciri wants to be a witcher just like her Papa G, but Geralt's like, yo, no, kid, it's too dangerous. So to figure out her powers, Triss takes Ciri into a magic nap to her past. Here we meet the human version of Ciri's father. Remember in season one, we only met him as the cursed Sonic the Hedgehog. Her parents were concerned she fulfilled some prophecy, that's why they had to run away. And going even further back, her great 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 grandmother was an elf who fell in love with a human and prophesized one of their descendants would bring about the end of days with the horsemen of the apocalypse, so watch out for that. So Geralt figures that's their cue to leave, but on the way they find a new monster that, oh no, attacks the horse, oh not Roach. Geralt's real mad now, he chugs a monster energy drink that makes his eyes go all black, and oh, slays this monster, don't mess with a man's horse. Meanwhile, Yennefer and Kahir are on the run, and they hear of a bard who can smuggle him out of town. Yes, it's Yaskir. But remember, the last time he and Geralt met, Geralt was in a real bad mood and told him he didn't want to be 
friends anymore. So Yaskier's new song this season is Burn Butcher Burn, an intense emotional ballad about a best friend breakup, not quite as catchy as Toss a Coin to Your Witcher, though. So he and Yennefer aren't exactly friends, but he hooks her up with a trip out of town, but just then he's kidnapped. Yes, there's some other random woman who hired this criminal fire mage to track down Ciri, who was last seen with Geralt, who was last seen with Yaskier. So Yennefer comes to save him, but without her magic, she's got to improvise. Oh, alcohol fire to the face. So they're out of the fire, but into the frying pan when they're immediately captured by city guards, and Yennefer is like, fine, I give up. Turn your front to me, Hut Hut. So Creepy Hut Witch tells her how to get her magic back. She's got to find this girl, Ciri, and bring her to a monolith. So Geralt brings Ciri to a safe, happy temple where she can learn to control some of her magic. But now Yennefer is there looking for Ciri and is surprised to find Geralt. Oh, Yen, you're alive? Yeah, these two reunited. So it's quite a curveball that the random girl she's looking for happens to be Geralt's child of destiny. But just then, Fire Guy's back with a whole gang of ruffians, and so it's finally time for an epic fight! Yes! Oh, so sweet! It's in that awesome style from the very first episode of season one. And if Netflix were to hire me as a consultant, my advice would be put one of these sweet fights in every single episode. But Fire Guy's after Siri, so Yennefer teaches her how to use her magic to open a portal. But Geralt chases this guy off like, hey, I won the fight. You don't have to escape. But Yennefer's like, sorry, boo. I got to do what's best for me and steal Siri away. So Geralt goes for some bro time with Yaskier, apologizes for being such a dick. And Geralt knows this hut witch is the deathless mother, an ancient demon the witchers imprisoned a thousand years ago. So Yennefer is leading Siri into a trap in hopes to get her magic back. But along the way, she starts to teach Siri more magic and starts to really like this kid. So when they get to the monolith, Yennefer changes her mind. Hey girl, I'm sorry, I was tricking you. Just then Geralt catches up to him and is pretty mad at Yennefer. She's like, yeah, I'm sorry, this was my bad. She warps them back to the hut mother to find she's already escaped. Yes, over in Sintra, things were going good for these two. Eventually Kahir shows up and has a nice shave. And there's a lot going on here. I'm gonna try to streamline quickly. There's the elf kid Siri met in season one, who's being forced to spy by this owl, who's actually a woman who's working for the buff old bald wizard, who's working for some king that's doing some scheming. In fact, all the wizards are scheming. That's what they do. The current council leaders are the old guys, Stragobor and Artorius. But Vilgefortz, the hero of the battle, is challenging their seat with his running mate, Mama Bear, Tissaia. In fact, these two are dating, and they win the election. They're the new leaders. But when Triss tells Tissaia that Ciri might start the apocalypse, Vilgefortz gets mad she didn't tell him and shows his true colors. Yes, remember, in season one, after the battle, Vilgefortz killed one of his fellow wizards, so who knows what he's up to. Anyway, back in Sintra, many of the Nilfgaard generals don't like Frangilla or the elves. So Frangilla poisons them with the paralyzed wine and, oh, takes them all out. She keeps Kahir alive, though, like, hey, man, you're cool. Let's be friends. Meanwhile, the elves have their first elven baby in a long, long time, but it makes them want to stop fighting for Nilfgaard. But then the baby's assassinated, and the elves assume it was the Northern Kingdom, so they go on a rampage. She uses her magic to murder all the human babies, Passover style. So the hut mother feeds on suffering, and now she's had enough, she breaks free and possesses Ciri. Geralt goes full Molly Weasley, not my daughter, you b but the hut mother uses Ciri's scream power to break apart the witcher's tree, which, oh, has a monolith inside it. And she knows how to control Ciri's power to turn it into a portal to summon monsters from another dimension. So all the witchers are fighting velociraptors. Geralt's got the big one outside and boom, smotes its ruin upon the mountainside. In the end, Yennefer is willing to sacrifice herself, draws the hut mother out of Ciri into her. But now Ciri's like, hey, I think I know how to banish her. And whoa, opens portal, blam! The three of them teleported to Mars. And now the hut mother bails because this is her home planet and she's able to get her original body back. And she's one of the horsemen of the apocalypse, the wild hunt. They're like, hey Siri, you're one of us, time to join the wild hunt. But Siri for now pieces them out of there. What is the wild hunt? Geralt seems to know, but doesn't tell us yet. And somehow as part of this adventure, Yennefer gets her magic back, all right. And so Papa G, little Siri, and Mama Yen Yen make a happy little found family ready to protect Siri from whoever's hunting her. And there are a lot of people hunting her. The Northern human kingdoms want her dead for political reasons because she's the princess of Sintra. And Tissaia is normally a good guy, but is helping them probably to stop the apocalypse. But now the elves learn about Ciri and want to use her to start the apocalypse to wipe out humanity. Then there's Burned Face Fire Mage working for a mysterious boss. By the way, they stole that one witcher making juice and the girl he's working with tried to snort it, which is not how you use it. And oh, now she's uglier than him. And of course there's Nilfgaard who was hunting Ciri before it was cool. And now coming to Sintra is the God Emperor himself, Emir the White Flame. Now Frangilla really was friends with the elf queen and would never have killed her baby, but she decides to take credit for it to show that she's a good leader who can make the hard choices. But the emperor is like, I know you lying, cause I'm the one that killed the elf baby. And turns out the white flame is Ciri's father. Yes, Sonic the Hedgehog is now the main villain. What's his real motivations for hunting his daughter Ciri? Find out in The Witcher season three. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies. And if you love this recap, check out the join button and support the channel as a member.